Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So what you're seeing here right in front of you is the um, Asus Z9PA-DB and I didn't really think much, much of it when I bought the custom workstation uh, from uh, Calgary Wholesale on eBay. And, you know, I was like, oh man, you know, it's going to be just a standard um, ATX server motherboard. But, you know, I got to be honest with you, when um, when it came and when I, when I looked at the manual and saw some of the features that it was um, showcasing, I, I, I got to tell you, this, I don't know if I would use the word obscure but it's definitely unique in its own sense. So <clears throat> it's a it's a dual socket uh quad channel RAM. So in, in that regard it's pretty standard. It's got 14 SATA uh with the uh black ones being SATA 3 and the rest of them being SATA 2. It's got a bunch and I mean a bunch of fan headers. So it's got one, two, three four, five right here, six, seven, eight, and that's not including, uh, that's not yet including um, any fan splitters or fan controllers that you might be using. It's got LED debug light and two full PCI Express slots, which, sorry, PCI Express 3.0 on top of it, okay? And then everything else is PCI Express 8, but, the unique part of this is that each one of these, according to the manual anyways, to my understanding, is that each one of these PCI Express slots is wired into each CPU. So this guy is wired to this CPU and this guy is wired to this CPU. Um, again, small asterisk because if when I read the manual, this is how I understand, uh, this is how I understood it. Um, it could be uh, that I'm misunderstanding it, but that's up to you guys if you want to have, have a look at the manual and uh, it, it, see if you better understand it. But this is how I understood it. And <clears throat> unique in the sense that if you just take a peek down at the bottom of the motherboard, you're going to find a fairly unique looking slot where it looks like a backwards PCI and then a backwards PCI with an open edge. And well, this is uh, Asus's approach to building an on-platform uh, RAID controller. So this, uh, this uh, little um, jumper right here, which is on pins two and three right now, if I can find, there it is right here, which is a RAID selector. So right now I've set it to use the onboard um, Intel controller, but if you, if I move this from pins two and three to pins one and two, this can use what Asus calls and rightfully has trademarked a Pike card. And uh, it, it's, by today's standards, it's not really something out of the ordinary. It's it's just an LSI uh, 2008 RAID controller or an HPA. But it, it's it's how they're approaching it that um, I actually find quite uh, quite amazing. It the 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 card itself doesn't really have any connectors. It uses the onboard SATA connectors. And uh, it manages all of the data on the card itself. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, at first I was like, you know, holy cow, you know, this is, uh, this predates uh, some of the enterprise class daughterboard storages. Like, uh, for example, if some of you are familiar with Hewlett Packard Gen, Gen 9, how they have like a dedicated slot for their RAID controllers. Well, this is the exact same principle. Look, it, it's awesome. It's it's out of the way for it from everything else. And I, I the geography of it, it's, in my opinion, pure genius. It's out of the way. 
and um, all the data is managed on the controller itself and then all the drives interface with the motherboard through the onboard data. Pure genius. I mean, they did that. Um, the, the release of this motherboard was, oh, fuck if I remember correctly, uh, sometime around 2012, late 2012. I, I have to reference back to Google, but I believe it was back in 2012. And, you know, this... This feature, this 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 implementation of, ha you know, adding a RAID controller on a separate port. Well, you know, yes, it was uh, proprietary. However, just the fact that it existed for the day, it was, it, to me specifically, it was mind blowing because I personally haven't. Well, I haven't found because I haven't really put a lot of effort into it, but from like preliminary two or three searches i haven't really found uh a board with a similar not exactly the same but like a similar implementation of a raid controller or an hva card now <clears throat> the functionality is rich like i'm talking about this thing has a bios that can put even some of today's uh, servers to shame and we're talking like a huge huge selection let me just uh, let me just power it on so just just for as a disclaimer this vi this board is a little finicky um, there was damage in shipping from the uh, warehouse I, I am in contact with the vendor I should get a response um, today or tomorrow but uh, it is a little finicky with the boot process. Sometimes it's it's a bit of a hit and miss. Sometimes it boots, sometimes it doesn't. Oh wait, wait! It booted. It booted. Hold on. Okay, it's not so bad. So I'm sorry that I'm filming my monitor, but uh, just just for for the quickness of it, I just wanted to go over. So this is your um. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention you have dual LAN with onboard management, which again very very standard for the uh, the era of of this platform onboard serial and VGA, which is controlled by a where are you? Oh yes, right here an A speed ASD twenty three hundred, which is slightly below uh the super micro offering, which is the AST twenty four hundred. So. <clears throat> back onto the BIOS. So this is the uh the very standard just general um overview um of the of the of the system BIOS itself and you may be noticing something that uh not a lot of server grade motherboards um at the time had uh mainly HP was not uh, full UEFI compatible, but Dell was. I don't know why there's such a discrepancy between them, but this one, this motherboard right here, this compact 10 by 14 motherboard is full UEFI compliant. And now this BIOS was updated in 2014. I still have to find the latest version and update it to see if there's going to be any fixes, if there's going to be like any uh, changes to the... Uh, to the mayo itself but look at all these options that this this has available to you so cpu configuration uh it even has its own um onboard audio controller which is not um for, for the purpose of these motherboards it's not very widely uh practiced to have an onboard audio controller now, that being said, though, there is nowhere to plug it in. So I'm assuming you would have to uh, jerry-rig some type of connector, but it does. And that's crazy. Hold on. Let me find, let me just find the option really quickly for, um, where is it? PCI subsystem. Nope. Not that. Oh, 
No, I I will find it. It's it's in there because I disabled it. And uh Oh, okay. Well, this right here is an indication that there is an audio controller. Um I'll find it. I I promise you it's in here. Um <clears throat> What is this? But yeah, okay. So going down, uh, compat compatibility support module. In in my previous video, this is this is actually a, a very good point. In my one of my previous videos, I mentioned that X seventy nine equivalent platforms can boot from specific NVMe. Uh, drives and but for that to work you need a specific type of <clears throat> uh, uh, <coughs> sorry you need a specific type of option to be available so that your your motherboard knows um, how to address it uh, because of the uh, extra code that executes when the NVMe bootstraps so in this motherboard in particular can boot from NVMe and the reason why is because of this. So this right here, the storage operand policy is what you're looking at if you want to boot from the era of Samsung Pro 950 NVMEs. Once you set it to UEFI, um, <clears throat> say, you set it up to NVMI, you plug in your NVMe as you normally would, and you're off to the races, my friend. You can install Windows and boot from Windows or any other operating system by choice. You are not limited to Windows or Windows Server for that matter. But once that option is enabled and you save your settings and uh, assuming that there's no errors in BIOS that, uh, <clears throat> sorry, that, uh, that are going to prevent you from doing this, you can boot from NVMe on this platform. And um, just, wow, you're, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit um, surprised, uh, taken by surprise, because I was not expecting the functional uh, functionality that uh, this motherboard is showcasing. And, uh, you know, for, for those of you who are looking, I did find this completely accidentally and and I and I don't mean to uh and, and I don't mean to sugarcoat it anyway. I bought a server that was called custom server without any specifications in the description, but there was Z9 coming out of the uh uh coming off of the peak of one of the pictures. There was there was a second cooler here with a second CPU. Um, Z9 was coming out. I could only assume it at the time that this motherboard would be what's coming up, but there was no way for me to be certain of it. So, uh, I bought it on a whim. I got it and it came and this is, this is what ended up popping out. Now, <clears throat> this motherboard, uh, in terms of functionality, it also has, um, you know, obviously it has onboard TPM. It's got a couple other things like a, another uh, serial header, a um, couple other things that I wanted to sort of address. Um, where is, oh, well, obviously uh, for, for the era onboard USB as well. Actually, you know what? Let us, let's, uh, let's put these, let's put this motherboard in USB UEFI mode. Um, actually, this is gonna be not that because this is a USB two. We're gonna put it in. Hey, look at that onboard USB three as well. All right, give me just a sec here. Let's uh, let's put this board in full UEFI, enable secure boot, and uh, start the Windows installer just so that just for just for the gigs of the giggles of it okay so we're never gonna do uh csm that's fine 
it's fine let's go to security we're going to enable secure boot yes that's fine and uh, there is one more thing that I wanted to check uh, oh by the way I am running a e5 2697 v2 uh, that's in in the previous video of sorry the video that's that showcases the uh, all the parts that I got for three hundred fifty dollars the twenty six ninety seven I got for I think slightly under forty Canadian dollars and that's because the vendor accepted an offer <clears throat> so all right let's take a look here see um, okay it should be good so another drawback. And, and this is probably one of the few drawbacks that um, I have noticed on this motherboard so far and that's without using it too much is that it takes an insanely long uh, whoops uh, uh, okay hold on hold on hold on I want f11 I think Um, it, it does take a little longer than um, another workstation board in its class or server board. This boards more towards a... <clears throat> Sorry, this board, this board um, goes towards um, a server board more than it does towards a workstation board simply because of the um i don't want to say because of the classification because that doesn't really um sound accurate but there is a a large feature set that this motherboard offers that you don't find on a normal um that you don't find on a normal workstation board and that's uh mainly the twos of everything you know like the two uh two serial header uh, sorry the one serial header with the one backup on board the dual lan the uh, the the dual cpu four channel now i know some of you are gonna say well you know dell did Dell had that phase where they had a rack mounted um a workstation yes you are correct but that workstation only had parts of what you what you are seeing on this motherboard uh, overall whereas for example I and, I and I'm just gonna take this on top of my head because I know it for a fact is that uh, that their workstation in particular I'm I don't remember the motherboard on top of my head but I will put it in the description that workstation uh, from Dell did not have IPMI and, and that's just on top of my head you know like uh, maybe it had features that this Bunderboard doesn't necessarily offer you know but I, I, I digress everything is a little bit of a hit and miss now <clears throat> uh, if I, I, I I'm, I'm fairly certain that a lot of you guys are also familiar with Logan who has the um, the series of, uh, of of the NAS killer where you know he's making some uh, videos which are very budget oriented where he's taking some um, retired pieces of kits and then repurposing them depending on the functionality of the board well logan i want to one up you my guy and say that this is the nas killer killer um i'm not really uh, sorry i'm not yet going to um configure it i i have a couple other things um on the way back to my home address when um i want to say maybe in a month or two is when i'm gonna put it into play but um yeah man i i, I think this is gonna this is gonna put a challenge on your nas killer and uh let's let's duke it out because i have uh i have very good um very good uh expectations of this motherboard now that being said uh, this is where I'm going to leave you at. Thank you so very much for, for joining me on this one. I will see you in the next one. Stay frosty.